Hey, hello and welcome everybody. Um, <clears throat> when I was a kid, uh, yeah, I used to fool around with my grandmother. She's not around anymore, but I used to fool around with her and uh, scare her half to death, like uh, pop up out of boxes and all kind of crazy stuff. And she used to say, you low down and dirty kids. Well, I've taken that to a new level. So I'm here to give you guys a low down and dirty tip. Not just a tip, but some techniques for creating characters in Maya and bringing those into ZBrush and back to Maya again. Well, in the old days, that used to be very difficult to do. Right now, though, it makes it you Pixel Logic makes it so much easier to do that. Um, and it's really a click of a button. It's that easy. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Google, obviously. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to search for Pixel Logic. You can search for Gozi. Immediately when you put in Gozi, you're going to get uh, Pixel Logic's Gozi uh, plugin. So go ahead and download Gozi. You can play the movie or whatever. Once you get there, you look to the left hand side, you can download Gozi. There's even uh, tutorials, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, and obviously, there's the thing there to buy ZBrush which I highly recommend it's only $6.99 remember that's pretty good so go ahead and download GoZ once that's done downloading go there to download once that's done I've already downloaded it so I'm not going to do that once that's done downloading you go ahead and follow the instructions and put the plugin into Maya because that's what we're going to be using after that go ahead and start up Maya so, if you don't see that after installing the plugin, you can go to Windows, and what you want to do is you want to go to your um, settings, and then you want to go to your plugin manager, and then your plugin manager go all the way down, and down there you will um, look through your plugins, and then you'll see the uh, the Gozi plugin. And then you just go ahead and click it. So evidently I already have mine here. Now let's uh, start off by creating a polygon cube. And I'm not really going to go over all the shortcut keys that I use here. That's going to be for you to look at the other video on shortcut keys because I go over shortcut keys and stuff like that also. But for right now, I'm uh, assuming that you know your way around Maya just a little bit. You know, you know how to move it around. You know how to zoom in, zoom out, and that sort of thing, and how to convert it um, between non-shaded and shaded. So we're gonna we have this cube here, and basically, I'm just gonna fool around with this cube. Let's uh, kind of quickly make a character here. So I'm gonna. Squeeze this. I'm gonna chop this here. Cut this in half. And you know when you're doing this sort of thing, you kind of want to make sure that you have something in mind. Normally, when you're doing this, though, you would have, um, let's say, like um, an image plane or something like that. And you have drawings and, and all that sort of stuff to make this a lot easier. But we're just actually kind of going over the process here. We're not really, I'm not really trying to show you exactly how to uh, model a character or anything like that. So, you know, nothing too uh, amazing happening here. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole process. I'm just going to make something fairly retarded looking. Obviously, I don't have to tell you that. You're looking right at it. So, let's say I have this right here, okay? So, let me just kind of make something of this thing. Oh, that's um, you know what? They're looking. James Cameron's looking for me. He's like, we need you for the next Avatar. Look at those graphics. Look how amazing that is. 
So don't go run out yet and send your resume to uh, Pixar or anybody yet after doing this. Just kind of stick with it. So after I'm done with that, so let's say I make this awesome character. And there you go. There's my awesome character, my half robot. And, you know, he, uh, story behind this is that uh, he comes to Earth to destroy all humans. But when he arrives, he's barely the size of a human hair. And his dreams have been shattered. Destroy all humans. So after I'm done with that, I go ahead and click uh, Gozi button. When I click that Gozi button, a lot of magic happens. You're going to see things flicker and pop and move. And then eventually what's going to happen is that um, ZBrush will open. Bingo. And there's ZBrush. It opens. And why don't you see anything? Well, there is something. If you really look closely, after you install the plugin, I hope, if you really look closely, there's this tool here. And that tool looks strangely familiar. So obviously, that's the tool we just now created. Immediately, go ahead and put that thing there and immediately hit T so we get that you can um, translate it. Now, I can move this thing around. And this is so awesome because now... I can take this little pin here, and everyone remember my Cintiq video. I can take this little pin here, and now I can start actually molding this thing based off of my hand movements. I'm going to move this around a little bit. So see, I can move this thing around, but as you can see, it's just kind of moving it. Moving around, it's, it's sculpting it, but obviously I need more detail. So because I need more detail, I can just go here to geometry, and I hit divide, and now it's dividing that bad boy. Look at that. From here, I can go ahead and start doing all kind of stuff here. So I'm just going to put something stupid here. It doesn't really matter what you put here. You know, it's the process that we're trying to, I'm trying to get across here. Go ahead and change this, change this. Start adding all kind of crazy stuff to that. And just, what's happening to my robot? It's not a robot anymore. So remember, this is like, this is bump, bump maps. And, and the great thing about ZBrush is that it will go ahead and create a UV mapping for you. It will break this thing down as a UV map. You can go ahead and start adding all sorts of wacky things to this thing and painting it and alphas and textures and we're not getting to that obviously. I told you that already. We just want to know the process. So so I'm done now. Now what do I do? Do I have to go down here and do the farmers and UV maps and start exporting those things separately? Nope. All I have to do is go to the Gozi button that's so nicely placed here in ZBrush. I click that. And watch what happens. Here's the magic, folks. <laughs> Here's the magic. Here it is back inside of Maya. Look how look how this thing looks. It is every it still has the same geometry that I had before. Except though when I render this thing, it has all of the the bumps and all that stuff on there. Um, and that's how easy it is. That's it. That's how you get your crap from Maya to ZBrush. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and email me. There's a couple of places you can email me, but the best place is just go to YouTube and leave a message there and remember to subscribe and if you want to know anything else, have any ideas for any tutorials, go ahead and email me with that, uh, those requests. There was something I wanted to show you guys, though, before I, I took off. It's pretty important. Okay, so... I just wanted to show you guys how it automatically gives the, the color. And if you were in, in ZBrush and you were to put color on this and you were to go ahead and 
uh, map this thing, it would create its own, it would create a really nice looking UV um, map layer. But I don't want to get too detailed. So let's, let's recap really quick, okay? So we downloaded the GoZ, we installed it into Maya and into ZBrush, by the way. Then we opened up and we created our character or whatever, and we went to the tab, the Go, Go ZBrush tab, click the Go, Go Z button, it automatically opens up ZBrush. We did our editing and push um, Go Z again, and it exported it right back to Maya. When it came to Maya, it was exactly like we had it before, but it came with all the UV and it came with all the materials and the alphas and whatever we had already in place for us and not only in place but also connected as a you know connected in the inside of the hypershade so all right so thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time